Dave again here with another question on topic 10.4. We're looking at uh, Type 1a supernova. Uh, we have an orbiting telescope and it picks up the light from a supernova in a nearby galaxy. Analysis of the spectrum of light indicate that this supernova was a Type 1a supernova. Uh, the light from the supernova that we measure on Earth has an apparent brightness of 40.5 times 10 to the negative 11 watts per square meter. And the galaxy is near enough that through other methods, we were already able to tell that uh, the galaxy must have been two megaparsecs away. So we knew how far away this uh, supernova was uh, without having to know anything about supernovas. Uh, later, uh, another type 1a supernova is detected. It has an apparent brightness of 2 times 10 to the negative 16 watts per square meter. We want to determine how far away this supernova is. Um, so to answer this question, we need to know the relationship between the apparent brightness of something that we see in space and the distance from us. And that relationship is that the apparent brightness is its luminosity, the total power it emits, divided by 4 pi d squared. 4 pi d squared is the surface area of the shell uh, that you lie on uh, where the object is at the center of that surface. So if that's the supernova exploding, and here's Earth, there's this shell, this spherical shape around the supernova that all of its power has to pass through. So the whole power, its luminosity, goes in all directions, uh, including to Earth. So if you divide all that power into the surface area of this shell, you get how much power reaches each square meter uh, on that shell, and that's the apparent brightness v. Uh, okay, so we know the apparent brightness, and at least in the case of, of the first supernova, we know the distance to it. We want to find the distance to it in the case of the second supernova. The key here is to recognize that for a type 1a supernova, the luminosity of the supernova is always the same. So the luminosity of the first supernova is going to be exactly the same as the luminosity of the second supernova. So if we rearrange this equation to solve for the luminosity, we get that the luminosity is the apparent brightness times 4 pi d squared. That's going to be true for the case of the first supernova, and it's going to be the same luminosity in the case of the second supernova. Uh, and so what that's going to allow us to do is, is to take this relationship, this equation, and solve it for the distance to the second supernova. We can do that first by eliminating 4 pi, which shows up on both sides of the equation. Uh, and then we're going to try and solve for d2. So d2 squared is uh, d1 squared, uh, d1 on d2. We'll take the square root of both sides, and that'll give us d2 is equal to d1 times the square root of, of d1 on d2, the ratio of the apparent brightnesses of the two stars. Uh, and we know everything on the right-hand side of this equation now. We know that the distance to the first supernova was 2 megaparsecs. And we know the two apparent brightnesses. The first one was 40 times 10 to the negative 11. The second one was 2 times 10 to the negative 16. Okay, when we uh, perform this calculation, uh, we get a result of 896 uh, carrying through the units mega parsecs.